my friends who are black and people of color, you know, they start thinking about even when they're in school. Now in school, you see these things in recitals, mm -hmm. right? Their own recitals. You never saw that like even 10 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the impact speaks for itself. But mm -hmm. what I want to ask you about is how, you know, you started these, this kind of programming on this YCA tour, right? And that was a number of years ago, and you've done that for, for a couple of years. How has programming like that, interacting with this kind of material, changed your perspective on what it means to be an artist, I guess? Yeah, how has it changed my perspective? I don't know if it has, I really don't know if it has changed my perspective. There are, well, there are a lot of different ways you can use, take up space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just don't want to waste my time and I don't want to waste other people's time. I want to be as conscious as I can and as a, and as intentional as I can mm. with the time that I have. Mm. So, and also the time that I'm spending with other people, um, cause it's precious. Yeah. It's precious. And if nothing else, what this period of the pandemic has underscored, um, is how, so, you know, we can, we can charge through life, <laughs> um, and deflect and, dismiss and disengage. But when you have to stop and look at yourself and look at the world around you and what look at, consider what things are and are not working, re-examine and reevaluate. That has to be a content. There has to be commitment to that always. Mm, mm, yeah. And, you know, I, I, this idea of being called an, an, an activist, it's not something, you know, I'm so glad that some of the art that I'm making does provoke and challenge and, and question. Mm. And that I, I'm, yes, I, I, I do know. And I'm happy to hear that the impact that that's having on younger artists is real. But it's like, you know, at this point, what does it mean now? I, I know how to be an activist in artistic space. Mm. And maybe it is growing up in this segregated space and feeling othered by both white and black communities and feeling like I needed to find a way to communicate um, and if, from a very personal place, but also that, you know, hopefully had sort of uni universal resonance in one way or another, but essentially like, how do I hold people who are perpetuating abuses of power? How do I hold them in a space so that we can just can engage in a conversation or engage just even in a, <laughs> in, in some sort of shared consciousness for a period of time? Mm. And I do think I have a skill at that because I've, ha I've had to learn to become savvy at that. Um, but the impact, I remember Susan Wadsworth, when uh, I first started programming this recital, yeah. this YCA recital, and she said, um, and I said, I just want to make sure it's, you know, it's like, I it needs to be context driven and I want the material to resonate outside the concert hall. And she was like, Julie, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I was like, Oh, maybe I'm not being clear. And you know, for her, it's like, why did, why would I ever need, to, you know, why would I ever need to justify what I'm doing in the concert hall and make sure that it speaks in some way beyond it. But it's because I didn't feel at home in the concert hall. I had to find in order to even justify my commitment to this field, 
I had to find a way to contextualize everything that I was singing. And again, like have a, have an, um, an eye of inquiry on it or a view. It's like, it's not even trying to project onto the material. It's just like, and in this context, what does this piece mean? And as a, as a woman of color singing in front of this predominantly white audience, what does this piece mean? And, and then how does, how does it encourage, engage with the com- community that is beyond those who already feel that they can be in the concert hall? Mm. Because there are, th- there are barriers to entry for so many of these spaces. You know, I, up until this point, I have been very much interested in communicating with it, you know, with the people who are in those spaces. Um, but now it's like how, how I have always had my sights and, uh, on like, what, what's the, re- what's the, the reach and intention beyond the cement mm. space. Yeah. I, I'm still looking for ways to ensure that it's not just limited to like programming, but the way that we are making art, the way that we are sharing it, the way that we are um, making it with each other, mm. <laughs> um, and that we're really honoring human beings who are making the art, not just the institutions trying to hold on to these strong institutions. Like, um, but then disregarding the human beings that are within them. And even in the training of young artists, the trauma that happens in those spaces, Mm. as we are learning, we're trying to learn how to express ourselves. But the messages that are so often communicated about, and power dynamics at play and the elements of control the impact that that has on a young creative mind, damn it. That, and the fact that the artists who survive that space can go on and be, you know, they fight like hell to survive it. Um, and then go on to be a quote unquote success. It's like that conversation has to be had Mm. too, because that is contributing, that's contributing to all of this. But the um, that the glitz and the gloss and the <laughs> um, around this industry, yeah, yeah, that's so over. It's mm-hmm. done. Like the curtain has been raised. People are looking backstage, <laughs> right. and um, I'm grateful for that. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful for that. Also, because it's like our industry is somehow the most delusional and like the delusion, the most delusional of the representations of white supremacy that I know of that exist in the, in the, in the arts world. Mm. It's like, Mm. and it's because people feel that I I think it's because that people who love classical arts, they are dealing with material that talks about human truth all the time. It's like, you know, universal brotherhood and all that. But it's so easy to idealize what that is. Mm. It's so easy to take those messages and again, pull them out of context and say, well, we, we we're saying the words and we're singing this stuff and we're playing this stuff and we're, we're charging people to hear it. <laughs> it's like, um, and we're offering it. So of course we believe this and of course we're living into it, but I cannot look at the practices of most of the major industry, you know, most of the major institutions of my wonderful classical music business and and this business and say that, um, their values are honorable and they've been acting responsibly and care, caring, genuinely caring about not just their artists, but the communities in which they've been claiming to serve. I can't say that. Yeah. And for anyone who believes that I think is either blind, ignorant, or just a fucking liar. Mm. 